Sonic the Hedgehog first blasted onto our screens back in 1991, and with this speedy gameplay, it was one of the many reasons why people fell in love with the blue blur, with me being one of them. The graphics, colour, speed, and this awesome soundtrack kept people glued to playing Sonic 1 again and again. So, for nostalgia's sake, I decided to grab my copy of Sonic 1 and replay this fast beast of a game. What the... Is my Mega Drive dying? What on earth? Come on, speed up! I don't remember you being this slow. Well, actually, it's always been this slow, in Europe anyway. Because we had what is commonly known, the PAL version, which plays in 50Hz, whereas the majority of the world had the NTSC version, which played in 60Hz. 60Hz being one which is generally standard in today's world, and even ports of this game in Europe play in 60Hz. And because I have got used to it, I don't exactly remember playing it this slow before. Which in time has now made me ask myself, how on earth did I live with this? Well, mainly because back when I was a little kid, I didn't know any better. Yet in 50Hz, it was still pretty speedy compared to other games like Mario, which also played in 50Hz back in the day if I recall correctly. So, I thought it's time to do a comparison of Sonic 1, PAL vs NTSC, or 50Hz vs 60Hz. Firstly, just so you know, I'm using the EU version of the game to represent 50Hz, and the Japanese version to represent the 60Hz. Now, even though the games have minor differences, the game itself still runs at the exact same speed, it just depends on what version of the Mega Drive you use. I have the EU version here, which runs in 50Hz, and the Japanese version, which runs in 60Hz. So if you put the Europe or the Japanese version in the Japanese Mega Drive, it will run in 60Hz. And if you put the European or... Well, imagine that the Japanese would fit in there. It would run in 50Hz. So, to get a sense of speed, I decided to do a demo comparison. On the left is 50Hz, and on the right is 60Hz. As you can see, we are one frame into the title cards, and both demos will end the timer one frame before the white background of the Sega logo turns up. Anyway, let's start them demos. As you can see, the PAL version is 7 seconds behind. Alright, 0.01 second behind, but pretty much 7 seconds, we can call it that. Ok, so the very first thing that most of you will notice when coming to play 50Hz, is that the music is a hell of a lot slower, is a lot slower than what we're used to hearing. I mean, here's Green Hill for an example. And then you have others here, like Spring Yard Zone, where the intro takes forever to start. But after a while, say like in the middle of Marble Zone, you start to get used to it. You like, you kind of drown it out and it just feels normal to you. But then you get little spikes like the beginning of Spring Yard Zone that reminds you, yeah, this music's going slow. But you start to ignore it again once you get into the level. Here's a strange thing though, once you get speed shoes in 50Hz, obviously the music speeds up, but it starts to sound a hell of a lot more like 60Hz. Ok, maybe a little tiny bit faster, but we're almost there. The next thing that I noticed is Sonic's control. Like when he jumps, he feels very floaty, feels like that I'm still in water. Also under the control category is Sonic's acceleration, it is so slow. It takes ages for him to gain any speed, and with no spin dash in the game, it really does matter. Another thing to note is that the end of result screen takes forever. And I mean it's not like that you can skip it either, A, B and C do nothing, and start obviously pause the game. So if you get a fast time, say like Green Hill Zone, you're going to be waiting a while at the end. Here's 
is something that I almost missed. It's that the very first thing we should notice is that the resolution of the game in 50Hz is actually shorter in height, kinda giving it that widescreen effect, which is actually pretty cool. But then back in that day, we didn't have widescreen TVs. Well, not that commonly anyway. Because of the shortness and height, you kinda get a border at the top and bottom, even on the left and right, which is kind of annoying. In 60Hz though, you get the full height of the game, meaning you get the full resolution of the game. Although I still get a slight border, but that might be my telly. As you keep playing the game, you start to get used to its slowness, but there are other things in the game that remind you that it's going slow. Like the scrap brain zone platforms, they're taking forever to appear! And then you've got levels like Marble, which is naturally slow anyway, so in 50Hz it's just slowing it down even more. And then these platforms in Spring Yard Zone, oh Gordon Bennett, if you people were playing in 60Hz thought you had a problem, try playing in 50Hz, fudge, they take forever! Also, the loading times in 50Hz take a long time. Although, to be fair, it's still pretty quick. I mean, we're playing on a cartridge here, it doesn't have that much to load. One thing that started to aggravate me is that if I ever died and didn't hit a checkpoint, or I missed a checkpoint, or hadn't even reached a checkpoint, you then restarted at the beginning, and that really got to me because I just could not be bothered to get to the point where I was before. It takes forever in 50 hertz. Yeah, I died a few times in 60 hertz and had to start from the beginning, but it didn't feel so much as a chore that way because the game's going a lot faster. So in 60 hertz, I just kind of bit the bullet and just got on with it. Here's another disadvantage: you got the timer here in 60 hertz. Yeah, that looks good. And then you got the timer in 50 hertz. Ah, uh, that's not keeping up. Oh dear, oh dear. So it's not looking very good for 50 hertz. I mean, everything about it seems terrible. Right? Well, funnily enough, 50 hertz does have its advantages. Let's give an example right now. For me, I have quicker reaction times in 50 hertz. Let's use Labyrinth Zone's boss as an example. There was a 50-50% chance that I could actually defeat Dr. Eggman. Otherwise, there was a 90% chance that I would complete the boss first time. It was extremely rare that I would ever fail it. That does count right, I was under a lot of pressure to do it first time, damn it! And when it came to 60 hertz, I did certainly struggle with it, and now I can see why everyone else struggles with this boss. I mean, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to defeat him. In fact, I've never defeated him once in 60 hertz. Although I'm still able to complete the boss half the time, but that's probably because of years of experience. Because of quicker reaction times, I was able to keep my rings a lot more by avoiding badniks and other obstacles, and that way I was able to enter the special stages pretty much every single time at end of Act 1 and 2. Speaking of special stages, these are a lot easier in 50Hz as well, because of reaction times. Because it spins a lot slower than it does in 60Hz, I'm able to time my jumps at the correct time and able to go where I want to go. I didn't fail the special stage once in 50Hz. Also, if you hit the up orb to speed it up in 50Hz, it goes almost the same speed as what it normally would do in 60Hz, maybe even a little tiny bit slower. So, special stages in 50Hz wasn't too much of a chore for me. In 60Hz though, it's a completely different story. I mean, there was loads of times that I failed, because it's going too fast and I wasn't able to time my jumps correctly. And if you ever hit that up orb in 60Hz, it obviously goes even faster, so God help you! <laughs> because I failed a fair few times in 60Hz, it wasn't until Starlight Zone I was able to get all the emeralds. Whereas in 50Hz, I was able to get at the end of Spring Yard Zone Act 2. One final advantage I can think of in 50Hz mode is that widescreen effect. Yeah, yeah, I know, I've already put it as a disadvantage, but in today's modern world, when you've got widescreen TVs, it looks a lot nicer. Although then, to counter-argue that, having full resolution does look nicer as well. Having it in full resolution mode in 60Hz, it does look a lot better. So, that's personal preference, I suppose. And that's about it for Sonic 50Hz vs 60Hz. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, and if you really enjoyed it, then why not share it? Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, then please, please subscribe. It shows a lot of support, and if this video takes off, then I might do a Sonic 2 50Hz vs 60Hz. And yes, I have stuff to talk about that game as well. Until next time, I'm Red Hot Sonic. See you soon!